Around the House Northwest is sponsored by Chevy Camarado. From outdoor enthusiasts to do-it-yourself diehards, the all-new 2023 Camarado is the boldest, most capable Colorado ever. Official truck of Around the House Northwest. Now it's time for Perform Like a Pro. Sponsored by The Wall. All right, guys, today we're going to tackle a new project. I got to build some stairs coming off my deck down to a new patio I'm going to build later. I'm going to show you how. All right, this is kind of a simple project, but I'm making it more difficult, like I always do, because I want an inside corner that's going to go both sides here. So it's one big staircase. So what we're going to do is I'm going to build, instead of building stringers where you cut out and put the steps in, I'm going to build stair boxes because they're more solid. And in this application, they're a better fit for this. So it's going to be two platforms with two steps. Let's get into this. It's time to cut some lumber. Here's one cool thing about building these stairs like this. I'm using all my scrap pieces. With the price of wood these days, any time that I can use the scraps, that's saving me money. You know, I'm using pressure treated lumber on all the framing of this because I want it to last. Other than using some kind of steel, it's gonna give you the longest life, especially when you're putting down a deck product that lasts 30, 40, 50 years. The more you can do on keeping that really waterproof and treated, the longer it's gonna last. All right, so now we're just gonna build our little ladder set up here or this wall or deck section. This is really easy. We're just gonna do this every 16 on center. Make sure that we get every piece lined up flush like this. Let's put our screws in. Put at least two screws on this just to hold this together. What I'm gonna do is just chase down the one side and then I can uh, get the other backside done here. So I've already marked these out here. Let's get that started. Just get that really flush. Now being that this is a set of steps like this, it's got a lot of support in it with these edges being so close. Always take a look at your deck manufacturer to make sure sometimes on the thinner decks, they want these 12 inches on center, not 16, but this is the maximum we can go with this setup. Plus being that it's so short, each piece is gonna have support along it. So it really doesn't matter that much in this application. All right, one of the tips here is, you know, pressure treated wood always likes to move around a little bit because it's always wet when you get it. And so this has got a little bit of a twist to it. And so easy way to fix that is just to push it around a little bit. If we go right there, get this so it's flush, then we just sink a screw in and we're good to go. And that way, we've got something nice and square to fasten the decking to. All right, let me talk a little bit about what I have going on here because I'm building this a little bit backwards and this is why. So I'm gonna be coming in here a little later this month and actually putting in a paver patio down here. But I want these steps to be built so I know where that finished level is gonna be. That way I have any issues, I can figure them out right now. So I'm building it kind of backwards by putting this top step in, coming in and I'm gonna shim it up with blocks. But that way it'll be finished and I'll know where my finished level is for that block. So that's why I'm building it backwards. Otherwise, I would have concrete down here and I'd have these sitting into concrete. This time, they're gonna be sitting on top of a paver patio block. Now, here's a secret when you're doing any kind of a deck project, deck tape. A lot of different companies make it. This is a waterproofing that you actually put down here on top of each one of these little pieces. What's cool is this actually waterproofs that whole top surface because that's really where your deck frame rots out. Every place that you have a screw hole is just an invitation for the water to get around it. This seals it off, it'll double the lifespan of that deck framing, which means this might last as long as the decking itself. All right, so now we're working in the rain today, but I've been putting this together and we've got two different types of boards here, actually three technically. We've got our bullnose piece, we've got our regular decking and our fascia. 
So this fascia is kind of that toe kick where we're gonna be bashing our feet up against it, so I want that to match. And so I've been really putting this together in a miter corner in the corner, and today we're gonna to wrap this up over here by getting the rest of this in. We're gonna start out with this millboard by putting the fascia on here first, because it has to be flush with the top of this so our bullnose piece can set down on it and we don't have any gaps. So let's get this fit up and we'll get this thing going on this side and get out of the rain because I want these steps done today. One little secret when I'm using this, when I'm doing this by myself, if I've got a screw hole right here, I can't really move it because I'm gonna create a new screw hole. So what I'm gonna do with this is since this stuff is self-healing, I can actually come in here, loosen this one up. Since I need to move it this way about Oh, a sixteenth of an inch, I can just move it that little bit, set the other screw, not set that one yet. So that way I'm in a new hole. And that way, I think we're at the right angle and we've got a clean corner. All right, this is where these little pocket framing squares are so great for doing these kind of things. I've got my miter here to cut for our uh, bullnose tread here that'll go across here. So I'm gonna make a miter cut that will go right across here. You can kind of see the line in the water right there. So I'm gonna cut that next. Once I get that, I'm gonna lay that out here so we know what the length is and I can make sure I get the miter correct. It's really easy to template this out when you have it like this. It's another little trick. Make sure this is 100% right. Now making sure your saw is set up for a perfect miter is key, but really getting this so you have a nice tight corner is how this makes it look like you're a pro and you know what you're doing. Just take the time, do it right. It's gonna look amazing when you're done. All right, I've got my inch and a half here, but I need to have it on this end as well so I know where my miter is. That defines where that line is gonna be for that 45. So now I come down here and I can mark out where that is here. So my inch and a half is right here. So the outside of this board is gonna be here. Knowing where that is, I can come in here with my 45 because I know that's the termination point here at the end. Not where this line is, because this line actually continues down. So don't be fooled by that. So you wanna actually take this point that's right here and level that out. So I come in here with my framing square, so I grab that corner. And that right there is my miter. So that way when I come in here, this is going to be my inch and a half. So I know that that is gonna have the correct overhang when this other board goes across here. One little tip with this self-healing finish on this millboard is when I put the screws in, I don't wanna overdrive them in there yet. Because if I have to move it around, I'm never gonna find the screw. So at the very end, I'll sink all the screws around. That way it's locked in and I'm not searching with a metal detector where I put that last screw to move a board. All right, we got our tread steps, basically our stair bullnose on here now. So we just got to put the deck boards in right here, finish this thing off. We almost got her. All right, there you go. That's how you build some inside corner steps for your deck. It's pretty easy. Just have the right tools take a little bit of time.